How's it going, everyone? How you doing? Uh, welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh Key. You don't hear me. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we have our week seven battle against Poke Pidge in the UBA. This is the final battle of the regular season. Next week will be the playoffs. Um, of course, be sure to check out Pidge down in the description down below. Go subscribe to him. He's a fantastic person. Um, so go subscribe to him and his channel. Um, and also, of course, all the other coaches in the description. Subscribe to them as well. And my channel too, I guess, if you want to. Uh, <laughs> so, unfortunately, with this video, this is going to be a post commentary on my side. Um, I'm an idiot. I accidentally deleted my cam. Uh, so, we only have... Thankfully, I still have the gameplay. Thankfully, I still have the gameplay. So, we have the gameplay. Otherwise, I would have just asked Paige if he could send me his. Um, but, thankfully, we still have our gameplay. So, we're going to be talking over it. We're going to be going over it. Um, so, we're going to start here with the battle rules. I came in. And, obviously, think about normal rules. Y'all know how it is. Uh, so this is the team we are going to be rocking um, right there. Groudon, Walking Wake, Vocal Runner, Infernape, Galarian Weezing, and Lilligant. Um, BB League, League 14, blah, blah, blah. I was talking about Cassie P. I think I should have played it. But we're saving, we're saving for the playoffs. We'll save Cassie P. I think we'll bring it back for the playoffs. Um, but yeah, we got Pidge here. Uh, his team is a little scary. It's got a good balance to it. Mew is obviously one of his staples. Uh, in competitive battling, Mew is a very scary Pokemon. For those you might not know, Mew's stats are perfectly balanced at 100, and it can learn every single move. So it is a scary, scary Pokemon. But with this match, he brought the exact team I thought he would bring. Espathor, Mew, Mousehold, Dondozo, Kilowattro, and Chin Pao. Uh, the rest of his Pokemon, he has a King Gambit, Meowskarada, and Gogo. I didn't think they were good matchups for our team, so I didn't really expect them at all. Um... I honestly wouldn't have been too surprised if we left Chen Pao at home, but Chen Pao has its uses. Chen Pao. Chen Pao. I don't know. I was saying it weird right there. Chen Pao has its uses, so I, I wasn't... I wouldn't have been surprised if we left it home. I also am, was not surprised at all that he brought it, obviously. It's a fantastic Pokemon. Its ability is insane. Speed's insane. It's just a great Pokemon overall. Um, but that's more or less the team I expected. And so we head into the match here. Um... I, I didn't even talk about the profile pictures. So these profile pictures are kind of similar. Our main profile pictures are also pretty similar. <laughs> um, but yeah, here we go. Pidge sends out Steve. Steve, the Mew. And we sent out Mothra, the Volcarona. Now, Volcarona was kind of just a feeler. I, I really wasn't too concerned with what Volcarona would do in this match. It was just a feeler. Uh, if I could get off a of Quiver Dance and just kind of get some kills, that'd be great. If not, I just needed to test things out. I needed to see what this... Especially this Mew. I was kind of... I was... Scared and relieved at the same time that he led Mew because I can get some information on it. I can figure out whether it's special, how it's built, all that good stuff. So I was able to get some information on it with the, with the Volcarona. Like I said, Volcarona was just a feeler. It wasn't meant to be the end-all be-all. It was just my like, let's see what he's got. And he had power gym. <laughs> so we get the boo bopped and we get thrown out of the thrown out of the match immediately. So Volcarona goes down. Like I said, I, I wasn't too upset. It was just meant to be a filler. Now I know he's got a special Mew. Now I know his Mew's more than likely built into speed. Um, I have an idea of how his Mew's built. Obviously, only one move, but Mew, that's really all you need. That's a lot of what you need for information from Mew. Um, otherwise, it's just it's it's just it's an annoying Pokemon, man. <laughs> uh, so we send out Lilligan and we cover dance again. Now this one was a little bit more of like, okay, I think we can get away with this, and I think we can, you know, do some work with Lilligant here. Uh, he does nasty plot. He does nasty plot, which was a little scary, but I was like, okay, we get up a quiver dance, so sorry, special offense to be up one. We're gonna outspeed it. In my head, hindsight is 2020. I always say this when it comes to competitive battling. Hindsight is 2020. I probably should have just clicked Pollen Puff here. I got a little greedy. I got a little greedy. Click Quiver Dance. Um, I probably should have clicked Pollen Puff. Like I said, hindsight's 2020. Hindsight's 2020. I should have clicked Pollen Puff because Mew comes in with the hot, ironically enough, the hot Ice Beam and brings us down to 31 HP and it freezes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it froze. It froze. I genuinely think Lilligant would have been able to get off like a good three kills two three kills something i think it just could have done some work but fortunately we'll never know <laughs> we'll never know if we thought out immediately that would have been insane but unfortunately we did freeze again hindsight's 2020 you could say i got greedy i didn't see the freeze coming honestly you could have had flamethrower you could have had any move that could have hurt lilligan ice beam was just one of them i again mew learns every single move so it was just a guess at what move super effective move he had for lilligan unfortunately it froze so Lillian goes down for the count. 
Uh, we sent in Mr. Schmancy here, I believe. Um, I wanted to preserve my legends as much as possible, and I wanted to preserve Infernape as much as possible, just because Infernape's our ace, bro. He, I love him. <laughs> that's literally, that's it. He's on the damn logo. Like, I love him. <laughs> I think he's our top killer this season, so um, I love Infernape so much, but that's kind of, it was just bias. That's the reason why I sacrificed um, the wheezing here. I, I say sacrifice. I was just willing to let it go more than anything else, but right here we're already in an o2 hole it's not great it's not looking good um that that freeze was a really big deal <laughs> unfortunately we got really unlucky there but he does switch he does make a really really good prediction here i didn't even say I, we clicked uh shadow ball i was trying to decide whether i wanted to set up or not but i just wanted to get the mew gone I, he i'm sure he saw that coming a great predict on his part so he switches to mouse hold normal type of course you can't hit that um so right here i'm debating is he gonna tidy up Tidy up obviously raises his attack and I believe it, uh, attack and speed and it gets rid of hazards. So it's an insane move. So I was debating, does he tidy up here? I need to play it a little safe. Um, and he actually kind of got me by surprise with this move. Um, I mean, a little bit by surprise. Not too surprised though. I mean, Mouse Hole is just an annoying Pokemon. So of course it has an annoying move like Tickle. Uh, so he tickles Infernape, which actually is a bigger deal on Infernape than it would have been on Weezing. Um, I think he did that to make sure he got Weezing within range to kill. Uh, I believe right here, I think I do check the speed on Mousehold, and it does have, I, I think, three base speed higher than Infernape. So I wasn't going to risk it. I figured he built it to speed. There's no reason not to. Um, so I just hard switch back into Weezing and took this hit. I forget what he does. Yeah, is it an acrobatics? What is it? Aerialist. I knew it was a fine type. Um, so yeah, he hits the aerial ace. And we dazzling gleam. Um he tickles us. He tickles us again right here. It's really annoying. <laughs> it's really annoying, but it is it is, it is not, not that's, what, that's just what Mouse Hold does. Uh so our attack and defense lowered. Um we do get this thing down to about about 50%, 45%, whatever, tomato tomato. Um I was really debating here, do I set up toxic spikes? I don't want to give him a reason to tidy up, so I just went ahead and clicked the dazzling gleam because I knew it would kill. And adding to our bad luck, <laughs> population bomb comes in, and it hits seven times in a row. Unfortunately, I know population bomb can hit up to ten times, I believe. Um, hit seven times on Weezing right there, and of course the defense lowering was not going to help either. But yeah, so Weezing goes down. We're down 0-3, and at this point it's just damage control. If I'm being 100% honest, um, there's still a chance we win. He still has his Pather in the back pocket. He still has his Mew at full health. There's a slim chance we win here. Um, so it was really just about damage control. Thankfully, Mock Punch uh, came in clutch here. Uh, I wasn't sure if it would kill Gary, but then I was like, wait, its stats aside from the speed really aren't that good. So I was like, I should go. <laughs> Let me just click it. The only There's only a couple Pokemon that like a Mock Punch. I kind of half expected him to switch to kill a Watch Roll here. Um, he didn't. He hit the Mock Punch and it dies. Um, not that surprising. Like I said, his defense is not that great. Uh, well, let me take a sip of water. I just spilled water all over myself. Anyways, so right here, I'm fully expecting the Killer Watcher to come out, um, and we're just gonna let we're just gonna ride in for Nate. There's no point in not doing that. Uh, that exact thing. So we're just gonna ride in for Nate. Sends in Bob, Bob the Killer Watcher. Um, this thing's a little scary. Killer Watcher is an interesting Pokemon. It's not super threatening, but it's also not something you can take too lightly. Um, so we just go for the Fire Punch. I just thought if I can take a hit, I'll dish it. You know, Iron Fist plus Stab. It's going to hurt, so I may as well just hit it. And we get a little bit of comeuppance. We get a little bit of comeuppance there. He misses the Air Slash. Uh, we do kill Bob. Oh, no. Oh, well, a Mock Punch here. Um, which I actually did not do the calcs on this because I honestly thought it might live. might have lived. I thought it might have lived. The crit comes in here, I believe. Yeah, there was a crit. And I... I'm not sure if that mattered too much because with Kill Watch's defense is not great. I just thought that the resistance would be enough. So that crit maybe mattered. Maybe slightly. It is Iron Fist boosted, so Mach Punch is still gonna hurt a lot. But um I was a little surprised that it died initially, and then I saw the crit. I was like, oh okay, cool. So he sends in Clive. Bloody Clive, and it's fantastic shiny. Um Yeah, we just hit it with a Thunder Punch. I didn't even have you can see right there, I didn't even hesitate. I was like, we just need to get damage off on this thing. I fully expected him to kill. I have expected him to curse, if I'm being 100% honest. Um, this thing is bulky as all hell, so I half expected it, but it didn't happen. He hits us with the liquidation. Of course, we died on those. Those are really strong. Um, 
So right here, I'm like, all right, we got to go for it. There's really nothing else. It's kind of like a match against Max. It's just at this point, what do we have to lose? We just got to go for it. We just got to go. Um, I was really debating whether I wanted to send in Walking Wake yet or go to Omega Red. I was concerned if Donzozo had a ground type move. Um, that was my main concern. But eventually, I do decide to send in Omega Red. It was just a long decision for me because Walking Wake obviously has a quad resistance to water. But I don't know what else, what other moves that Donzozo has. I'm assuming... It's just an assumption that he's just gonna only have water type moves or whatever um so i decided to play it safe with groudon um plus i can bait a water type move bait a super effective move and get off the terra that was my that was my idea was just get off the terra and bait a move that was it so obviously we terra electric and just go for it i actually meant to click bulk up right there but ultimately i think it kind of helped um helped doing the uh just going straight for the thunder punch because this thing is too strong i could not let it get going at all and we just had to kill it so it was a mistake right there clicking thunder punch i meant to click bulk up but at the same time it ended up working out a lot better that i clicked uh, thunder punch instead uh, maybe the bulk up would have helped in the long run maybe maybe but obviously this don is freaking bulky so it takes that hit we hit it with the thunder punch again um i was tempted to click earthquake just in case he switched um but ultimately, I was just like, nah, just go. Th nothing likes a Thunder Punch in this team. So I was like, just go for the stab. I mean, the, the Terra boosted Thunder Punch. I know Earthquake is still stabbed, but I was just like, the Thunder Punch, you know, it gets the boost from Terra. So I may as well just press it. Chance for Paralysis, too, on whatever comes in. So all that good stuff. I was just like, click Thunder Punch. Take it out. Ensure the kill. So Clive goes down. Clive goes down. Um, and he sends in a very scary Pokemon. <laughs> We were just talking about it earlier in the video. I believe he sends out Shin Pao here. I forget what he named it. His nickname is, by the way, incredible. I love his nicknames, especially as the last Pokemon that comes out. Perfect nickname for it. Um, there's two nicknames I have for his Pathra, which is the last Pokemon he sends out. Um, and you'll see one of them. The other one's Edna, because she kind of has the haircut, like uh, Edna from the Incredibles. But anyways, <laughs> so Pitch takes a second here. I think he's trying to decide whether he wants to sacrifice one of his other Pokemon, but ultimately he just chooses to go with Dave. Dave the Cheem Pal, the bloody Cheem Pal. Um, I really debated here. I really debated here. Drop boosted, fire punch, stab, earthquake, terror boosted, thunder punch. I mean, we just, we had options here. Um, maybe a bulk up would have been cool. I don't know. But ultimately, I just decided to go with uh, thunder punch again, I believe. If I remember correctly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I went for thunder punch here. Yeah. Um... So I clicked Thunder Punch. I knew I, I had an inkling he was gonna. I didn't know. I had an inkling he was gonna Terra. Um, and to tell me why, I thought this was. I thought this was Terra Ground. <laughs> I really thought this was Terra Ground. So I was like, Ah, oh, my Thunder Punch. That's a great prediction. Now, how do you know? How do you? Why do? Why would you have Terra Ground? Um, and then this wasn't super effective. So I was like, Wait. Uh, isn't that? I thought that was. I thought that was Ground. And then this hit. I was like. Oh, it's rock. <laughs> so this hurts, doesn't kill. Chim is actually surprisingly bulky, considering um, the type of mod it is. So we go for the EQ just in case anything else comes in. Uh, initially, I really, hindsight, again, I wish we would have gone for the earthquake to, from the start. Uh, if I'm being honest, I think he would have killed, but tis what tis. Tis what tis. And so Dave goes down, but he did his job. I didn't I knew exactly why he sent in Chim Pao the second he hit us. It was just to get damage off from the Groudon. That was it. He just wanted to get damage off from the Groudon and put it in kill range, which exactly is exactly what he did. Um, Chim Pao did his job. So uh, he sends in his Pathra here, and I was like, yeah, it's over. <laughs> I was like, it's over. If we somehow get past this Pathra, he still has Mew. So I was like, yeah, there's there's no way. Kevin, by the way, incredible name for an S Pathra. Kevin up. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's who he named it after, but I think a Kevin from up. <laughs> um, so he's a psychic, obviously it kills. And the only Pokemon we have left is Omega Red. This thing gets a speed boost as well. So his path is really annoying. It's like Blaziken, super annoying Pokemon. Um, yeah, I guess the speed boost, which is not great. The sun fades at the worst possible time. I think honestly, with the Protosynthesis boost, we might have gotten an out. We might have outsped Kevin. We might have outsped Kevin. It ultimately would not have mattered, though. <laughs> it ultimately would not have mattered. Um, yeah. Because we hit it. It would have hit us. 
same outcome because then his speed boost would have ticked off and the sun would have ran out by that point but and the special defense drop by the way on top of that my luck this match my luck this match was freaking awful um yeah it was gonna outspeed us regardless gets the plus uh plus two at this point and i mean what can you do what can you do we got to a really poor start we got you know fell into an 03 hole which considering the score line 6 4 down 03 <clears throat> the final score line being 6 4 i'll take it right i'll take it it's really not that bad it could have been worse it definitely could have been worse so the recovery was not bad uh we took out four of his mon to our last three so you know what can you do it's it's a tough one we really uh we really got unlucky that match it's just a shoulda coulda woulda type of match you know uh, all i can do is just kind of move on from it i guess oh those are our profile pictures by the way look super similar <laughs> i didn't even like magmar that much i just thought it was a hilarious picture to put in as my freaking profile pic uh but anyways yeah we got really unlucky again it's a shoulda coulda woulda match if we don't get fr uh, frozen with the lilligan you know i feel like we get a few kills there but and we maybe get off to the stronger start but unfortunately we do freeze again hindsight should have just pollen puffed hindsight is i should have just pollen puffed i really should have but it is what it is man it is what it is we uh we get unlucky and that's that's just how it goes that's pokemon pokemon is partially rng based so <laughs> that is one of the only matches i think i've had so far knock on wood hopefully nothing else ever happens but the only match so far that i've had competitively that got super unlucky like that um where my whole plan just got stalled um but it is what it is we move on unfortunately we do lose to pitch so there's a okay I, i'm not 100 percent sure how it's all gonna shake out but there's a decent chance we might play either Pidge or Carlos again. Or Jakey, which... Uh, <laughs> uh, that would not be fun. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think with this loss, we will fall to 5th or 6th. And we will play either 3rd or 4th place. So, Pidge is likely to land 4th. Uh, or Carlos, Mr. Toast. So, there's a decent chance we play one of them again or Jakey. I think those are our main 3 right now. Um, but, yeah. Next week is playoffs. Thank you guys so much for supporting the LA Inferno throughout the regular season. I promise I will do better next season. I just wanted to experiment with this, this fresh team. I just wanted to go for it with this team. Um, but yeah, that's me for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out all the coaches in the description. Be sure to check out Poke Pidge. Subscribe to all of them. Follow and subscribe if necessary. It's all greatly appreciated. And of course, be sure to share yourselves with our friends, family, everyone. You know, the people that love the North We'll see you guys in the next one.